Howdy Moz fans and welcome to another edition of Whiteboard Friday. This week we're going to chat about the Keywords by Sight uh, feature that exists in now Moz's tool set. Uh, we just launched it this week. And uh, SEMrush and Ahrefs who've had it for a little while. And there's some other tools out there uh, that also do it. So places like Key Compete and SpyFu uh, and others. And basically, the way you can think of this is in SEO software, there's two kinds of ranking data, rankings data, keyword rankings data. There's keywords that you have specifically selected or you know, your marketing manager, your SEO has specifically selected to track over time, right? So I've said I want to track X, Y, and Z. I want to see what the, how they rank uh, in Google's results, maybe in a particular location or a particular uh, country. And I want to see the position and I want to see the change over time. Great. That's, that's your set that you've constructed and built and chosen. But then there's what's called a keyword universe, right? An entire, an entire universe of keywords that's maintained by a tool provider, right? So uh, SEMrush has their particular database, their universe of keywords for, every, for a bunch of different languages. Uh, Ahrefs has their keyword universe keywords that, that each of those two companies have selected. And Moz now has its keyword universe, a universe of, I think in our case, about 40 million keywords uh, in English in the US that we track every two weeks. So we'll basically get rankings updates. And SEMrush tracks their keywords monthly. I think Ahrefs also does monthly. Depending on the degree of change, you might care or not care about the various uh, updates. Usually for, rank, for keywords you specifically chosen, it's every week. But in these cases, because it's tens of millions or hundreds of millions of keywords, uh, they're usually tracking them weekly or, or monthly. So in this universe of keywords, you might only rank for some of them, right? They're, it's not ones you've specifically selected. It's ones the tool provider has said, hey, this is a broad representation of all the keywords that we could find that have some real search volume uh, that, might, that people might be interested in who's ranking in Google, and we're going to track this giant database. And so you might see you know, some of these your site ranks for, in, in this case, you know, seven of these keywords your site ranks for four of them your competitors rank for, and two of them both you and your competitors rank for. And there's a bunch of cool data, very, very cool data that can be extracted from a keyword universe. Uh, and most of these tools that I mentioned do this. So they'll show you how many keywords a given site ranks for over time. So you can see, oh, Moz.com is growing its presence in the keyword universe, or it's shrinking. Maybe it's ranking for fewer keywords uh, this month than it was last month, which might be a a telltale sign of something going wrong or poorly. Uh, you can see the degree of overlap between several websites' keyword rankings. So for example, I can see here that Moz and Search Engine Land overlap here with all these keywords. And in fact, in, in the uh, keywords by site tool inside Moz uh, and in, in SEMrush, you can see what those numbers look like. I think Moz actually visualizes it with a Venn diagram. Uh, and you know, here's distilled.net. They're a smaller website. They have less content, so it's no surprise that they overlap with both. There's some overlap with all three. I could see keywords that all three of them rank for, uh, and I could see ones that only distilled.net ranks for. You can also grab estimated traffic. So you would be able to extract out. Uh, Moz does not offer this, but SEMrush does. Uh, you could see, given a keyword list, right, and ranking positions, and an estimated volume, and estimated click-through rate, you could say, we're going to guess, we're going to estimate that this site gets this much traffic from search. Um, and you can see lots of folks doing this and showing, hey, it looks like this site is growing its visits from search, and this site is not. Uh, Systrix does this uh, in Europe really nicely, and they have some great blog posts about it. Uh, you can also extract out the most prominent sites given a set of keywords. So if you say, hey, here's a thousand keywords, tell, tell me who shows up most in this thousand keyword set around the world of vegetarian recipes, right? And the tool could extract out, okay, here's the, here's the small segment, here's the galaxy of uh, you know, vegetarian recipe keywords in our key giant keyword universe, and this is the set of sites that are most prominent in that, uh, in that particular vertical, in that, in that little galaxy. So some recommended applications, things that I think every SEO should probably be doing with this data. Uh, and there's, there are many, many more. I'm sure we can talk about them in the comments. But first and foremost, identify keywords that you probably should be tracking that should be part of your reporting. It'll make 
you look good. And it will also help you keep tabs on important keywords where if you lost rankings for them, you might cost yourself a lot of traffic. And you know, monthly granularity might not be good enough. You might want to say, hey, no, I want to track these keywords every week. I want to get reporting on them. I want to see which page is ranking. I want to see how I rank by geo. So I'm going to include them in my specific rank tracking features. Uh, and you can do that by jumping into, well, in, in the Moz Keywords by Site, right? You'd go to Keyword Explorer. Uh, you'd select the root domain instead of the keyword. And you plug in your website, which maybe is Indie Hackers, a site that I've been reading a lot of like, lately and I like a lot. And you could see, oh, cool, I'm not tracking stock trading bot or ARC servers, but those actually get some nice traffic. And in this case, I'm ranking number 12. That's, that's real close to page one. If I put in a little more effort on my ARC servers page, maybe I could be on page one. I could be getting some of that sweet traffic. I mean, you know, four to 6,000 visit searches a month. That's, that's really significant. So great way to find additional keywords you should be adding to your tracking. Uh, second, you can discover some new potential keyword targets when you're doing keyword research based on the queries your competition ranks for that you don't, right? So in this case, I might plug in first round, first round capital, right? Has a great content uh, play that they've been doing for many years. And indie hackers might say, gosh, there's a lot of stuff that startups and tech founders are interested in that first round writes about. Let me see what keywords they're ranking for that I'm not ranking for. And so you plug in, you know, those two to Moz's tool or, or other tools, and you could see, aha, I'm right. Look at that. They're ranking for about four and a half thousand more keywords than I am. And then I could go get that, that full list and I could sort it by volume and by difficulty. And then I could choose, okay, these keywords all look good. Check, 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 check. Add them to my list in Keyword Explorer uh, or in Excel or Google Docs if you're using those and go to work. And then the third one is, you can explore keyword sets. I, I'm going to urge you to. I don't think this is something that many people do, but I think that it really should be, which is to look outside of your little galaxy of yourself and your competitors, direct competitors, to large content players that serve your audience. Right? So in this case, I might say, gosh, I'm indie hackers. You know, I'm really competing maybe more directly with, with first round, but you know what? HBR, Harvard Business Review, writes about a lot of stuff that my audience reads. I see that you know, people on Twitter that are in my audience share it a lot. I see people in our forums discussing it and linking out to their articles. Let me go see what they are doing in the content world. And in fact, when you look at the Venn diagram, which I, which I just did in the, in the Keywords by Site tool, right? I can see, oh my god, I mean, look, there's, there's almost no overlap, right? And there's this huge opportunity. So I might take HBR. And I might click to see all their keywords and then start looking through and sort, again, probably by volume and maybe with a difficulty filter and say, which ones do I think I could create content around? Which ones do they have really old content that they haven't updated since 2010 or 2011? Right? And those types of content opportunities can be a golden chance for you to find uh, an audience that is likely to be the right types of customers for your business. And that's, that's a pretty exciting thing. So in addition to these, there's a ton of other uses. And I'm sure over the next few months, we'll be talking more about them uh, here on Whiteboard Friday and here on the Moz blog. But for now, uh, I would love to hear your uses for you know, tools like SEMrush uh, and, and the Ahrefs Keyword Universe feature and Moz's Keyword Universe feature, uh, which is called Keywords by Sight. And hopefully, uh, we'll see you again next week for another edition of Whiteboard Friday. Take care.